Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. Next vehicle we're gonna be doing is a Model Y Tesla 2023. We're gonna be upgrading all the speakers using adapters and all new speakers as well that will bolt right in. We're gonna be changing out the sub speakers, adding sound dampening, doing a hardwired radar detector and changing out some of the USBs. This is gonna be a lot of videos and processes of each one. So we'll kind of make a video for each part and then make a full length video of everything. Man, the bass on this and the mid bass is incredible on this song. I mean, it, it is it is rocking this thing. I mean, the bass is so strong in this, like you can feel all the way underneath your seat. Whatever sub is in this stock, it's it's picking it up good. And the mid bass right down here, the six and a halfs are doing their job. I mean, stock. This thing sounds really good. I'm gonna tell you right now, this stock system in this and the Teslas, man, hands down, one of the best for being stock. Oh my God. Yeah, the bass in this is really good. Oh, well, besides the stock. Oh, there we go. I wish you guys, I wish you guys could fill this through the phone. <laughs> it sounds really good. Here is all the components that we're going to be putting into this vehicle today. These are the six and a half inch Alpine Type X speakers. The model number is a DP-653. These are extremely, extremely nice. Um, they are 3D printed on the sides of here so you can mount and already got the harnesses wired right in. So they become plug and play. These are a carbon fiber type cone. Type X's have always been known for the carbon fiber and the butyl rubber surrounds, which is really nice. It's been that way for 15, 20 years. We also have three of the three inch. I don't know why they give you this extra grill on top. That's random, just on one. Two tweeters, subwoofer mount, harness, tape, and then you'll get your pry tool and then your right angle and then your hardware. Um, there's also a sub as well. I'll show you some video and pictures of the sub that we're gonna be doing this as well. It comes with a new Alpine sub as well. But I can tell you, this stuff is a huge upgrade from what you're going to get with the stock stuff. So we'll put this stuff right next to the stock stuff and show you exactly what each component looks like comparable to the aftermarket Alpine, comparable to the stock speaker itself. This is the door panel we're gonna be working on on this 2023 Tesla Model Y. There are three screws. Screw underneath this little cap right here, which we'll take off and show you the screw underneath it. There's also a screw right here, right inside of here. And then there is another screw right here in this top screw hole right here. We'll show you what each screw looks like when we pull it out of these three locations right here. Got this out right here. This is the back side right here. Usually I'll use a plastic pry tool to be able to get this stuff out, but the plastic pry tool would not get it out. So we were really super careful with the flat part of our flat blade. And we just got underneath there very carefully and picked it up. You do not want to mar the plastic or anything else and destroy it. And then right inside there is our Torx. And this is a T30. So we're going to go ahead and remove this as well. Oh, it's in there tight, super tight. <laughs> Here's this bolt when you remove it. 
It's actually pretty long that goes through there. And I'll tell you right now, a lot of people say bad things about Tesla gaps and things like that, but I can tell you almost all the Teslas I've worked on, everything has been very, very good quality. I, I very rarely ever see any bad quality stuff come out of Tesla. I know a lot of people are going to fight with me on that, but you know what? I've worked on a lot of Teslas and I've had zero issues. So we're going to go ahead and do this next one right here. This one is a T30 as well. Almost look like the exact same bolt as the other one. I'm going to put that down here and it actually is the exact same one. Last one we're going to take out is going to be right here in this hole right here. It's another T30 right here. Here's the last bolt. We'll put it right down in there. And now we're ready to remove the door panel. What we're gonna take and we're gonna start prying on the sides. You can use plastic tank, pl plastic pry tool, or you can use a pry tool, whichever you prefer, and we'll start pulling all the way around and get this to come off. We got everything pulled back. Easiest way is we got into here with our plastic pry tool, I'll show you. So we got in here with our plastic pry tool and then pulled out. And that got all these snapped loose. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take this speaker, this tweeter pod right here off first. But we popped the grill off. <laughs> so here's what the back of that looks like. That was not easy to get off. Um, but in all reality, we need to get this whole piece off right here. So when we pulled up on the door panel, this will kind of come up with it as well. So this will kind of come up with the whole entire door panel. So when we pulled up like this, it'll come up with the door panel. We got this off is you pull up and it will pull out and then we need to unplug this right here. So you basically pull out of these two clips right here with these plastic pieces. And then this bottom piece right here will need to come right out. It's like a BMW clip. You just pull that out. And then we are left with trying to remove that piece. I'm not gonna unplug this. Um, I'm not quite sure why Tesla did this. It might be one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life, but um, there's no way to unplug this. You will need to unplug it from here, then it stretches up to here, and we've got one harness here, one harness here, one harness here. I'd have to unplug this whole entire harness off of everything off this door panel, and then remove this to be able to get, oh, why did you not just put a click part here, click part here, anything? So I pulled this off the push pin here. I'm just gonna set it aside so we can just unscrew the speaker and put the new speaker in. Terribly sorry, I don't like doing things like this, but I'm not gonna sit here and take apart the whole door panel just to unplug this harness when we're just doing four screws. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take off all the T30s, which it looks like one, two, looks like there's four, yeah, there's one here, one here, one here, and one here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this factory speaker and then unplug this plug right here. And then that way we can go ahead and put in the new speaker and we'll take this out right now. Go ahead and use the drill for this. Um, well, I'm sorry, I thought these were 30s, but I guess they're not 30s. So these are 25 T25s, just so you guys know. I'm gonna take all four of these out. So there are three of these. One, two, three. And then on the fourth one, it is a, like, I believe an eight or a 10 millimeter. Super weird, don't know why they did this. This is really awkward. <laughs> okay, so this one right here is an eight millimeter. And this is the eight millimeter that comes out. Only one very weird just to let you guys know it is a different thread pitch so that eight millimeter is gonna have to go back in that bottom corner where the other three go in the same see they're all the same thread pitch and then this one's different is the speaker removed now man that's a big old magnet better watch out boys we'd be killing the game here I think it's a neo magnet but man that's what you get for <laughs> it does sound good I'm not gonna lie to you it does sound good but there is not much depth right there. If you can see, that's that's not much depth right there. So hopefully these will fit in there with no problem. But this has got a very large, like besides this magnet, it's probably about two inches, I'd say. So hopefully these new ones will just fit right in there with no issues. Here is your stock speaker, which is a lot larger diameter, which is kind of weird. It's almost like a seven inch. I'll measure that to a six and a half. I was correct. It's about seven inches. So seven inches on this one, and this one's probably a six and a half. Yep, and that's six and a half inch outer diameter, so it's really a six inch, an actual six inch speaker, not even quite six inch. Whereas this one from rubber to rubber is around seven inches, and outside diameter is about seven and a half, seven three quarter. So just remember that. Okay, 
is the back. Boom, look at that magnet. And then here is the back of this. Like night and day difference when you look at both of these. For reference, this speaker weighs three times as much as this one does. Not that that's always a great thing, because Neo can be a lot better than, uh, you know, old school magnets. But um, this speaker is three times less as heavy as this. So this thing is three times the weight, which it is heavy. Um, but hopefully, it will outsound and outperform this. And then the plug-in is right here, just to plug it in like factory. Also, carbon fiber, butyl rubber, foam, paper. Big difference. So it does have a foam gasket around it, which is really nice. And it is gonna mount like this, where the two smaller feet down here at the bottom mount at the bottom, and this mount at the top, and then the harness is on the top as well. That's how it's gonna mount back in here, just like that. Speaker is mounted. You got your Torx T25s here and here, and then your eight millimeter here. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug this in, just like factory. I mean. Whoever designed these and made these and 3D printed these did a wonderful, wonderful job. Now, I don't know why they did them out of blue versus black. Black would be a little more inconspicuous behind this, but I do like the blue. I just, you know, it just looks weird, but maybe blue is cheaper than black when you print these. My only complaint would be is, do you see how thin this is? This is probably eighth inch from there to there. It's eighth inch all the way around. When I build these myself, especially on a speaker of this weight, I will build them out of quarter inch, so there is no rigid, there's there's no give. So when you push on this, it can move. And I want it to be as stout and as powerful as possible to produce the most amount of mid bass. So when I build these out of quarter inch, it's extremely structurally sound. So there is no give, there is no wiggle, there is no, it can't move this way. Um, this feels good because when they 3D printed this all the way back through here, this part right here is thick, but this, thin part right here is the ledge all the way around it once this seals up it should be good because all of it should basically the impact should be right here on the on the outside edge here not on this edge but hopefully this will hold the test of time depending on what this material is made out of but if i can feel the base coming through here that's going to be a problem because this isn't thick enough and if this becomes a problem where it starts warping or moving or vibrating you're gonna have an issue with the mid bass not being as good either. So I'll turn this on and kind of see what it sounds like without the door panel on. So I just played this and this is producing only lower frequency mid bass, no higher frequency mid bass, nothing, nothing vocal, nothing partial vocal. It is producing strictly like a mid bass driver in a Corvette, something along those lines, CTSV Corvette. This is like their 10 inch mid bass driver. That's all this thing is doing is producing mid bass. It is not producing vocal. It is not even producing partial vocal. It is just strictly bass and mid bass as far as it can get down on the frequency range. I don't feel anything vibrating here. I don't feel any leakage here. So hopefully going from an eight inch, seven inch woofer, but an eight inch outside, down to a six inch doesn't lose mid bass. Now I've had problems on Broncos, Jeeps, things like that, where we change out the mid bass driver like this, thinking we're gonna get more vocal and it's set up to be the same thing as this and I lose the mid bass. So I'm hoping that this works, but we'll see how this goes. I'm not too confident this is gonna make a huge difference. I think the top speakers will, but this, not sure. We're gonna go ahead and remove this tweeter out of here. Um, we're gonna pull these tabs back and pull this out. So these three prongs right here, you can kind of see those three prongs. That's what holds the tweeter in. So you just basically pull those back and then the tweeter will pop out. And then we're gonna be put, going to put the new tweeter in its place. And what we're gonna do is since this is smaller around than this one, we're gonna take this foam and we're gonna wrap the foam around the outside of the tweeter to get it to fit in here cushioned correctly.
We wrapped it around with one layer. We'll see how that fits in there with one layer all the way around. One layer wasn't enough, so now we've done two layers. Looks like two layers hit the spot. And it's also cushioned and foamed in there and it's, it's in there really good. And then we got our wiring harness right here that we'll need to plug in, but that's pretty much it. Super nice, looks really clean. Reinstall, we're going to do the exact opposite of what we did to uninstall. We're gonna push this down into this ledge on the top right here and get this all seated down. And I left this open so we can just put the tweeter back on it. And then we're just gonna push this back on and then put all the bolts back in. Plug that in and then we're gonna push these down into the clamps and then put the grill clever back on top of it. Make sure when you're putting this in that you get this clamp part right here. See how this part sticks up? You wanna get that seated up against this before you push down or otherwise it'll be like this. So you wanna get it up over this clamp and then push down on top of this. That's what holds this into place at the top right here. So when you're doing this, you gotta pull up when you're removing it and then when you're putting it, you gotta put it right back down in there and then push the two clamps down at the bottom. Now that we've got this door done, we're gonna repeat the exact same process on the passenger door, which we won't show because it's pretty boring. You already know how to do the first one. So once you get this one done, we'll do the exact same thing on the passenger side door, and then we'll listen to it and see how much of a difference just the tweeter on the top and the mid-base changes on this side. I think the tweeter will make a big difference. Mid-base, not quite sure, so we'll see. So now we're gonna move on to the front three speakers. First piece we're gonna be able to remove right here is we're gonna take this piece off. You can use a plastic pry tool and get down in here and then we're just gonna pull back on this piece right here. Do so you can find a gap right here. This one. <laughs> it's a little bit off from the factory, but it could be my eye too, but it gets bigger down here and then gets smaller up here, but it could be the way that this piece is fitting in here. All right, so what I would first recommend doing is pulling this back because this piece sits down inside of here and then pulls off of here. See how that thing sits down inside of there? This clip, as soon as I pulled on it, it just disintegrated. Literally just broke in half and then fell down into the kick panel. So I'm gonna have to freaking get into the kick panel to get this clip back out or find one that matches this plastic. It's like a Toyota, I'm guessing, plastic clip right there. But lovely, that's how that comes off. Don't ever wanna take this off ever again. Next step we're gonna get into is taking off the eight pillar. What I would recommend is getting in here with your plastic pry tool and pulling back on this area right here. What I'd also recommend is pulling the rest of this gasket off, that way you can get your hand back here and then pull so you can get your plastic pry tool, that way you can get your plastic pry tool down in there easier. As soon as you shove down in there a couple times and pull back, this bad boy will unsnap right off of there. So that's really nice, that's the clips that it has right there is there and there. I'm guaranteeing there's more down there. One way to get this out, is to pull these little tweezers parts, pull those in, and then it pulls this whole piece out right here. Got a middle clip on the bottom, and then you've got three plastic pieces on the top. And that is the A-pillar. We're gonna to wanna to do the exact same thing for the driver's side. All right, we have the driver's side and the passenger side A-pillar off. Now what we're going to need to do is we need to pry up on this piece right here and be very careful when we're doing it. Just pry it very gently all the way across until we get this whole thing up. But be careful, do not break this. And just keep going all the way across until you get it all the way out. All right, so we've got this whole thing right here pulled up all the way across. And then we're gonna wanna remove this whole entire piece out. Be very, very, very careful with it because it's very thin and very, very fragile. So, boom. And then we've got this whole thing and we're gonna take this whole piece out. And here is what this piece looks like on the back side. Very thin and very, very fragile. We got one speaker here, one speaker in the middle, one speaker on that side. So we're gonna start with this one here and we're gonna use the right angle that they brought us so that way we can get down into these and take them right out. I believe they are a T20. 
but I'll confirm with you on that. So this is the right angle that they give you right here. And then they give you a T20 and then a half T20. <laughs> So we've got our T20 on the right angle and we're going to go ahead and take out all these speakers. I think we're going to have to use the half one on the middle speaker. So we're going to go ahead and remove all three of these T20 Torx on these speakers. We got the first speaker out and it is hard to get this harness off because they do not give you much room to pull. That's as much room as you got to pull. So just to let you know, and this is your wonderful stock speaker that it comes with. Sounds pretty good for a piece of crap speaker in my opinion, I'm not gonna lie. Just unplug this harness right here, which is pushing in right here, which they don't give you much room to do that as well. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the middle one and the passenger one. So these are the three dash speakers right here. I want to kind of show you the difference. You know, you got rubber, carbon fiber, a lot different than paper and this is, this is like a rubber. It doesn't actually have like a, it's kind of a mix between foam and rubber, but it is a little better than the regular foam. This is the magnificent magnet on the back of these. I'm imagining it's some type of Neo, just because it's so small and so lightweight. And then these are the monster, monster magnets on the back of the Alpines. The Alpine weighs exactly three times as much as this speaker here. This is made out of just like a polycarbonate plastic you know, cast. I think this is partial Neo, and then you got paper, and then partial rubber, partial foam, versus everything on this is metal, heavy, heavy metal, especially out here, rubber, carbon fiber. Just a very well-built, Alpine built, a very good speaker on the Alpine Type X, which is now called the DP35M for this. And here is the stock speaker in comparison. I'll take some pictures to kind of show you. You go to unplug these, it is a nightmare because there's not much slack right here on this harness where my finger is. It barely can get it out to where you can get underneath here and unplug it. So I'm very fortunate that these come with a long pigtail on them because they are a pain in the butt to get out, to get pushed in to unplug and get out without hitting the windshield. So um, I'm very fortunate these have a pigtail on them and then we'll drop these in, mount them in the stock locations exactly like these. Funny fact out there for you, this Tesla speaker, is exactly the same speaker that came in my BMW. Exact same mounting down to the T as my speaker in my BMW M3, new M3 right there. Magnets are a little different, obviously, um, but mounting is exactly the same. So now I know that if I use this adapter, I can make an adapter that will work on Tesla speakers. So that makes me pretty happy, but the connector is totally different than the BMW connector, which is fine. I just need to figure out what pigtail works inside the speaker, and then we'll know exactly what to do to start making speakers for the Teslas. Pretty awesome. We got this one plugged in and seated down here. We're gonna take this plug and we're going to plug it into this plug right here and get this one seated in here properly because you got two bottom, one top, so you gotta make sure you get them in here seated properly. You can't have them in here wonky or they are not gonna fit. We got two of them mounted in and that one is a little more tough than this one to be honest. And then we're gonna do the driver's side now. We got them installed. Got all of them mounted down. You will need the short one for the back side ones that are closest to the windshield. This one you'll need the long one. And we've got the middle one installed and the passenger installed. It's not real tough, it's just tedious and you're gonna get your windshield dirty with your knuckles and everything like that. So just understand, it just takes some time and be careful. Try not to 
you know, damage your windshield or damage anything. And be careful, don't drop the bit down in there. It will fall down in there if you do. So just want to let you know. Now that we've got all three of these installed, we're just gonna re-put back on the top part, snap that back in, and then put the A-pillars back in, and then put these middle pieces back in. Just snap it all back together in reverse mode of exactly how you took it apart. So we're gonna be taking apart the whole rear end of this brand new 2023 Tesla Model Y, because we are gonna be doing some sound skins pretty much everywhere back here to sound dampen the whole entire back rear hatch. So we will be taking off this whole section here, this whole section, and then this whole section here. We will be taking this section out right here to get to the rear sub. So we will be taking out the majority of this just to get to the rear sub and the rear amplifier, which is back here. So we're gonna start with taking off this back hatch piece. We're gonna take this piece out, set it over here, and then we'll also start with taking this piece right here out. She's not my friend right now. All right, so we're gonna take this piece out. I'm, I put the back seat down because the way that this piece is shaped right here, it's hard to get down, so we pushed the back seat down and then we pushed it up and then kind of pulled that out. All right, so we took this gasket, we pulled the gasket off first, and then we pulled up on here and it's really tight and you pull up on this piece and then that's what the back side will look like all the way across. Now it's already missing one middle, metal one, so that must be down in here somewhere, so I'm gonna have to find that because it's already missing one of these. Great, that's lovely. So it's got four of these metal clips, so I gotta figure out where the other metal clip is at. Next step, we're gonna pull up on this, and you're gonna pull up on it pretty hard, and then underneath that, you're gonna have like clips here, here, metal clip here, and there's also a metal clip that's sticking out over there, so this thing just pulls right off completely right there. Next step, we're gonna take our panel pry tool, we're going to pry up this push pin right here. There's one on it. If I can get underneath it. And we got that push pin is out. We're going to set that down in here so that, that piece is out of the way. And then we're going to take this piece should just come right out. There you go. And then boom, this whole piece will come out, which is just locked in with these plastic tabs. And then this whole piece just comes out, which is right out of here, out of the bottom cavity. And then we're also gonna have a push pin here that we need to remove. And then there's that push pin, that for this. And then we have a push pin here and a push pin here that I'm gonna just go ahead and take out since we're already over here. We'll go ahead and take these both out on the front side of this piece. That way that anything we need to move right here, we can get it all out at the same time. I'm gonna get a container for those push pins, but we're doing pretty good so far. I wanna work on getting this whole thing out. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this piece here, which should just unsnap from the top here, which kinda of looks like everything's gonna go as one piece, but I'm just gonna try to yeah, separate this from here, just by pulling, which it likes to pull the tabs out. Let me tell you, I can already hear them snapping. Um, so that way we can get this whole, I'd like to take this carpeted piece out by itself, this piece, and then take this piece out. So that way it's easier to get out of this cavity. Yep, see, we got it out, because there's a big cavity down in here. And then we gotta pull all this back from the front side too. So I gotta get it up here in the front.
right, so this whole thing is one freaking piece going all the way up to the door. So it's really tough to get it off up there. I'm gonna try to do that. So in order to get this out over here, they have this piece sitting underneath this piece here. So you've got to take this piece out right here, which is a pain in the rear to get out in order to get the rest of this out. So just understand that in order to get this whole entire piece out, you got to take all that off in the front first to get to this big piece. Why would you not make this two pieces? Why would you not make this where it unsnaps off, where you can get accessible back to here, not have to take part the seats out in the middle of the, the car to get to this. That is a Tesla, stop doing stuff like this because that is dumb. You should not do that stuff. So now that we've managed to get everything in the front removed from this, now we can pull this whole entire piece completely out that runs, should have stopped right here and made this a separated piece like every other car manufacturer in the world where this is a, a separated piece. Now we've gotten to here where the factory sub is right here and the factory amp is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this amp out. Or actually, we'll probably just take it and remove it and set it down here for right now. We're not gonna take it out, there's no point. And then we're gonna need to remove the sub enclosure so that we can get to the sub amp. We are gonna take out the whole rest of this. We'll do that in this video as well. Um, but when we do our subwoofer video, we're not gonna even talk about the whole rest of this because there's no point where to spin sound skins in. If you're not worried about putting sound skins in, we're gonna focus on just the sub. So we're gonna take this out. It's got a 10 millimeter up top, 10 millimeter up top, and I believe another 10 millimeter on the bottom. You'll have to have a deep well for the, for the left one, the bottom one, the top right doesn't matter. So I'll show you a video of that. So here's a video up close so you can kind of see, but 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter, but you're gonna have to have a deep well in the same situation. 10 millimeter down here, you're gonna have to have a deep well because the, the bolt sticks out. We're gonna take this out here with the 10 millimeter and I'm sure there's some hidden ones probably back here somewhere. I gotta figure out where the rest of the bolts are, but I know for sure there's one right here. And then this harness right here plugs into the actual sub as well. We're just gonna move this because when we go to put the sub box back in, the sub is so close to this, I don't wanna scratch this or scratch this. All right, behind the amp is another 10 millimeter. So we've got the amp dismounted. We got a 10 millimeter down here, one back here. And I'm guaranteeing there's, some, there's one of them hidden back there somewhere, so. So in order to get to the top bolt of the subwoofer enclosure, there's a bolt here, bolt here. We're gonna probably have to take this piece off here. So I'm gonna try to take this off as nicely as possible without damaging or breaking anything on this. Um, because they've got a lot of hidden stuff in here the way that this stuff is like clicked into here there's just a lot of hidden things we're gonna go up to go up to the front as well So we got that out. I'm gonna show you some videos of it. I'm just gonna leave this back here because you'll have to take the seat belt out to be able to get it. So I'm just gonna leave this back here. There is a ton of clips. And then up here, it's got like a little clamp part right here. And then a ton of clips back here too. So just be super careful. And this does, this ledge right here sits underneath the headliner. <laughs> I don't know why they do that. Like Tesla, man, you guys gotta learn how to take apart cars and put the cars back together a lot better than what you're doing. You're making this way too difficult by too big of pieces. So here is our last bolt here, 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter down here, and then 10 millimeter over there. And that'll be the last of the three bolts that we need to take out, or nuts. Here's the subwoofer enclosure after we pull it out. There's a very large cavity back there. Kind of makes great use for this sub right here, but it is a ported enclosure, very lightweight. We're gonna kind of show you what's inside this bad boy. This is what we're gonna be doing today is taking this Alpine Type S that the customer brought into us, which is an SW8D4. This is the sub we're going to be putting into this sub enclosure from the factory Tesla enclosure that is ported. This is the mounting ring that was made to be able to mount this sub into here. Basically, it's an adapter. So it was CNC, you know, laser printed made. 
and then a wiring harness to be able to connect into this. So we're gonna go ahead and take this sub out and that way we can go ahead and get this switched out with the new Alpine sub. The Torx to take these subs out is a T25, and there is four of them, one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna take all four of these T25 Torx out. To let you know, there are some pins up here. So if you see these two pins up here, but they're not on the bottom, realize that when you're going to put the mounting ring in that there's two pins right there. So just understand that right there. So this is this amazing popping sub out of here. Man, this thing's killing it. <laughs> um, this is probably going to tell us our positive and negatives, I can imagine, because I'm guessing blue is our negative and green is our positive, judging by the size of the terminals, yeah. So red is our positive, black is our uh, negative, and then blue is our negative, and then green is our positive, judging by the terminals and it being a dual voice coil. So we'll take these off the terminals, now that we know. Then we'll remove this harness and then we'll be putting our new harness in there for the Alpine sub. This harness just comes off by pushing forward like this and it will come right up for you. This is how I would say that this goes on here. I'll make a, another video or a correction if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is how it sits in there. I've seen a couple other people say they've had it backwards. I tried to put it in backwards, it would not fit. So I'm pretty sure this is exactly how it goes with the pins here and then you put your four screws in and then you mount the sub to it. That's how I'm pretty sure and then this harness will go down through here and then come back out through here. I'm going to go ahead and foam this part here and then I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to foam the whole back side of this and then I'm gonna go ahead and mount this to this and then screw this up into this. We went ahead and took our 3M foam tape and we went ahead and foam taped all the way around on the enclosure. Then we're gonna go ahead and mount this onto there. And this should be pretty good right here. I want to make sure that all these wires are in there. And then we will also go ahead and foam tape all the way around this top part too, just so the sub will seat on there properly. Here's a comparison of the Type S versus the stock sub. As you can see, you've got paper, semi-foam rubber. This is 100% rubber. Wow, that's nice. Wow, that's super nice. You can just, just tell the difference between yeah, huge difference. Um, we'll take a look at the back side as well. And then you got a rubber gasket that goes all the way around. It's just a really nice sub. I mean, I will say for an entry level sub, the Type S is an entry level compared to Type R and Type X. So this is a good looking sub for an eight. And here is the back side with that large magnet and an enormous magnet. <laughs> it's like night and day difference when you look at these two. <laughs> That's so crazy. Since this already has a rubber gasket, I'm not going to worry about putting a gasket on top of the blue because that rubber gasket will seal it. Um, this is the hardware that it came with, so we're going to go ahead and use these to mount for the holes that are already pre-drilled into this. We got everything wired up, positive, negative, positive, negative, right there on the terminal. So we're getting ready to mount it in and screw it down. These are a three millimeter Allen wrench to be able to tighten all these down. We're going to go ahead and put the gasket back on because we've got them tightened on. Get this ready to go back in the car.